Are you still using Windows 7? If so, we need to have a little chat. Stick around. Windows XP was arguably one of the most popular versions of Windows to date. It's honestly only rivaled by the popularity of Windows 7. Windows XP was released in 2001. I remember the Windows XP release because I attended the Windows XP Roadshow on September 11th, 2001. I'm pretty sure we all remember what else happened that day. So that experience kind of sticks in my head a little bit. Windows XP did not lose support until 2014. So this also made Windows XP the longest supported version of Windows ever created. Windows XP benefited from 12 years of support from Microsoft. This wasn't due to a lack of trying from Microsoft to end support earlier. Microsoft extended support for Windows XP two separate times before they finally ended support in 2014. Support for Windows XP was not extended multiple times because of the dedication of the end users who loved it. It was actually extended multiple times because 90% of the country's ATM infrastructure was still running Windows XP. Microsoft was trying to gently nudge organizations to update their Windows. And, you know, since that didn't happen, they stuck to their guns and they ended support. When Windows XP lost support, it had been out for so long that most computers running XP simply wouldn't run Windows 7. At the time, I actually spec'd out an ultra-budget PC to help my own customers upgrade from Windows XP to Windows 7. Windows 7 was released in 2009. That means Windows 7 was actually released five years before the end of support for Windows XP. That's an average life cycle of a computer. There was literally people in 2014 that were still running AMD K-series processors. Even Windows 8 was released in 2012, so there was a lot of users who upgraded from XP straight to Windows 8. I remember at the time, the most popular upgrade that I would do was actually downgrading Windows 8 to Windows 7. I was performing these upgrades several times a week. End users hated Windows 8. They hated it so much that they were willing to not only pay me for a license for Windows 7, but also my labor to install it on their computer. So when Windows 10 came out in 2015, everyone had that memory still fresh in their mind. The debacle that was Windows 8. I remember the joke at the time is that every other version of Windows had constantly been a mess and that's why there was no Windows 9. <laughs> it's because Microsoft skipped the good version. People did not hate Windows 10 because it was bad. People hated Windows 10 because of Windows 8. They hated Windows 10 without even using it. This made the problem even worse when Microsoft ended support for Windows on January 14th of last year. Microsoft did not make the same mistake with Windows 7 that they made with XP. They did not extend support for Windows 7. I remember at the time a lot of people thought that they might, but January 14th came and it was it. Support was over. Windows 10 only gained market share over Windows 7 near the end of 2018. As of January 2020, Windows 7 still had a 25% market share. In fact, as of the filming of this video, Windows 7 still holds an 18% market share. This is over a year after it's lost support. End of life for an operating system means that it will no longer receive security updates. Windows 7 lost mainstream support back in 2015. Up until 2020, Windows 7 was only receiving extended support. This means that there had been no new features for Windows 7 since 2015, and the support was only security updates. Does anyone remember the TV show, The Screensavers? It was a tech-related show on Tech TV, a channel that I honestly don't even think exists anymore. The Screensavers did an episode where they took a Windows 98 computer and let it sit connected to the internet with no one using it. If I recall correctly, that computer was massively infected at the end of the episode. They did this to show what could happen to a computer that didn't have security updates. 
security updates patch holes within the operating system itself. Without these security updates, when exploits for the operating system are discovered, they will remain unpatched. At this point, your antivirus won't help you, and in many cases, nothing will help you. I hear people say that they just use best practices and, you know, stay away from malware sites and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that doesn't matter. Your computer could quite literally be taken over without you even using it. I very well could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that all antiviruses have stopped support for Windows 7. If you know of one that hasn't, then please share it in the comments below. But if that's the case, then you can't even get an antivirus in Windows 7. Another problem with continuing to use Windows 7 is hardware and software support. Do you want to play the latest games or use the latest programs? Do you even want to buy a new printer? It's likely that these options simply won't be available to you. <laughs> you may have to start getting your printers at garage sales. And I hope you like Half-Life 2. If you're still using Windows 7, you're not using a secure computer. And with the market share currently at 18%, you're a target for hackers. While you very well may be computer savvy, the majority of that 18% are not. This means that hackers know that 18% of computer users are not only completely unprotected by antivirus and security updates, but there's a pretty good likelihood that those people are not very computer savvy. This gives them a massive incentive to find security vulnerabilities in Windows 7. In fact, many of these hackers were probably sitting on zero-day exploits just waiting for end of life to come. You may think to yourself that, you know, it still doesn't matter. It's a risk that I'm willing to take with my own computer and it doesn't affect anyone else. Unfortunately, that's not true either. Oftentimes, these exploits are used to create botnets that are in turn used to attack other people's networks. This is where hackers essentially turn your computer into a soldier in their digital army that is used to hurt other people. Not all hope is lost though. If you just have to use Windows 7, Microsoft is offering a service called Extended Security Updates, or ESU. This is a service they'll be offering for three years, and honestly, one of those years is already up. This is a paid service that costs $50 per computer for the first year and doubles in price every year. Unfortunately, this service is only available to volume license customers, so this won't even benefit end users. But even if you were able to purchase this service, the total for three years would cost $350. A license for Windows 10 is a hundred bucks. Even better than that, if you're currently running Windows 7, Microsoft will let you upgrade to Windows 10 for free. I still update several computers a week to Windows 10, and the Windows 7 license still works great to activate Windows 10. In fact, I can't think of a single instance when that didn't work. Unlike when Windows XP lost support, most Windows 7 computers will run Windows 10. I highly recommend upgrading to an SSD drive, but it will run. And with an SSD, it actually runs pretty good. But you might say, well, I don't want Windows spying on me. And that's a genuine complaint. However, there's ways to disable telemetry in Windows 10 so that doesn't happen. Or maybe your problem is, is that you don't want Windows Update taking over your computer every time you're working on something important. I totally get that too. However, if you use Windows 10 Professional, you can actually delay updates for longer periods of time. In fact, you can actually delay feature updates while not delaying security updates. Some people may just be sick and tired of having to update Windows every few years. And you know, I get that too. And that's one of the reasons why I like Windows 10. You see, Windows 10 is not doing things in the same way that previous versions of Windows did. In Windows 10, Microsoft has moved to a rolling release. This means that Windows 10 is in a constant state of update. Windows 10 gets major updates every six months, and these updates last for 18 months. These updates come down through Windows Update and essentially makes your computer perpetually updated to the latest version of Windows. If Microsoft stays on this trajectory, you may never have have to switch to a different version of Windows again. 
Windows 10 is not a bad version of Windows. In fact, I actually kind of like it. I did a video a while back where I go through the reasons why I like Windows 10 better than Windows 7, and I'll go ahead and tag that video right here. If this video was helpful to you, then please like it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week, and hey, before you go, Check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.